Hello there and thank you for watching Dugoscopy TV today. Right now I have David Smith in the studio with me. He is the author of Geneva Business Insider and he always has a lot of interesting thoughts to share with our viewers. So David, last time on the show for the Dugoscopy question, you chose gold as the best investment for 2013. That's right. Now, Germany is repatriating gold. What do you think of this move? Well, I think Germany has obviously been listening to the G Geneva Business Insider. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think that they must have had, after some time, concern about you know the physical security of their gold. There was a time when it was very logical for the gold not to be in Germany when, when there was a real serious th Soviet communist threat. So the gold was stocked in Paris, um, uh, a very large part of it in, in New York and, and also some of it in London. Now the London gold, I believe, was repatriated some time back. And now we have uh, gold being repatriated from uh, Paris and from uh, New York. But I think the, the extraordinary thing about it is, is that uh, the Germans who have got three or three and a half thousand tons of gold are only repatriating a very small amount of it. And the question I have is, is this the tip of the iceberg where they make the first request? And then when there's a long delay in order to get anything, uh, you know, they may request to have delivery of all the gold. And David, which countries have repatriated in the past? And of course, which country's central banks are the buyers? Well, I think there have been several countries that have repatriated. Um, on a number of occasions, there have been tensions related to it. For example, with Venezuela, they repatriated their gold. Many countries also actually physically hold their gold in their own countries. Azerbaijan, for example, recently has repatriated and is now storing their, their gold in their own central bank. Uh, but the possession and control over gold has always been a very sensitive point in the international banking community. And David, why are gold and silver prices not rising sharply in the face of this demand? Well, I, th I think you have to look at, at the overall picture on what's happening in gold. We, we have a situation where everyone is beginning to wake up at every level, uh, from central banks to banks to uh, individuals to the fact that the, the paper currencies that we're living and working with are being destroyed. So gold is becoming uh, an ultimate means of security against the, the destruction of the value of the currency. So if you make a, a tour of the major economies in the world, you have China, which not only is the biggest um, producer of gold, but is becoming the biggest importer. You have uh, India, where there is enormous amount of gold being imported to the point that they're actually having to charge import duties to try and discourage it, which of course will fail completely because then they'll just uh, boost, boost the smuggling market. And many of the Eastern, Eastern economies are importing gold. So what we're seeing, there's a big east-west move in gold at the, at the moment, which is a complete uh, change of the trends of, of the past. But it is all based on the insecurity regarding the, the actual gold and uh, realizing that when the paper currencies do come to an end, which I believe they will, you have to be able to back up your new currency by something. And what about silver? Well, si silver is a precious metal with, um, with significant value and obviously the difference between buying uh, a kilo of silver, which costs you about a thousand dollars, compared to buying a kilo of gold, which is fifty thousand dollars, brings it within the reach of a lot more people. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a very large amount, a large takedown of people buying uh, coins, silver coins in large quantities, even to the point where at the moment the, the US are, have uh, stopped uh, delivery of silver coins. Now the other problem with silver is not only is it a store of value, but it's also a major um, industrial um, product. So it is used very extensively, for example, in solar panels there are applications for motor vehicles, for telephones. And there's even the story that at the moment, Apple's production of its latest large model uh, 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 Mac system is, is delayed because uh, they, may or may, they may not have enough silver to actually put into, into the, the machines. That's very interesting, David. Mm. And um, should we have a quick look at the graphs for um, gold and silver to have a look at the sure. performance? All right. Yep. So here's gold. Well, I, th I think, yes, that looks pretty much like gold. Um, 
you'll see that uh, for a long time the price has been uh, range bound between about 1650 and 1700. Uh, this is clearly due to regular daily 24-7 intervention by uh, the powers that be, which are namely the, uh, the bullion banks who are frequently acting on behalf of uh, the central banks and, and of governments, because the most essential feature is, is that uh, the government must ensure that the, there is no view of inflation. So the best way to in avoid having inflation is to have the inflation indicator turned off, which is namely the rise in, in the price of gold. So at the moment, uh, there, there are very large short positions in gold and in silver mm -hmm. on, on uh, these commodities. And any time the price looks at like it's rising, it's attacked once again. All right, let's uh, move on to silver. I know you think this is quite interesting recently. Silver has um, been beaten mercilessly. What you have to remember, the market in silver is so small compared to gold uh, that is very easily uh, manipulated by major banks. Gold can still be manipulated, but it's much more difficult. So a year ago, there were devastating impacts on, on the reduction of silver price from almost 50 down to below 30. And what we're seeing now is a period of consolidation. But all the indicators are that the actual physical silver, when people ask for delivery, is becoming scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. And I think that if we look at the, the trends of the prices at the end of last year, beginning of this year, we'll see a significant rise between about 30 and 32 in silver. And uh, I think this could well be a period when we see further very considerable rises in silver in particular, but also in gold. And David, finally, you know, who are the winners and the losers of this gold suppression? Well, the, the winners are theoretically the, the government at the moment, because what, what, it, what it does is they, they, they hide the, the truth from the citizenry, which is important. But uh, the, the, the true winners are the people who are picking up gold and silver at knockdown prices because the market price is rigged. And those are, for the moment, the central banks who are lining their pockets with gold, the eastern central banks in particular in this west-east uh, movement, and obviously, you know, bankers and people with very high net worth, um, if they have a little bit of spare money, they know perfectly well the risks in the bond market and the stock market and that the ultimate security is in gold. So there are no doubt Mr. Diamond is perhaps taking a percentage of his $10 million half-rate half salary, which he got this year for losing of $6 billion, I think it was. Uh, and no doubt he's taking a good part of that $10 billion and putting it in gold. So their interest is to keep this manipulation going until it can't be sustained any longer, use the spare cash that they have uh, to buy up gold and silver, and when the price goes up, they'll be sitting pretty. But anyone who else who looks at the situation and understands what's going on behind it can do the same thing, albeit on a smaller scale. Thanks, David, for that. That was quite an interesting insight into gold. Now, I have been following gold for a while, so I really enjoyed that. Now, David, last time on the show for the Dugoscopy question, you chose gold as your favorite investment for 2013. Um, now, this week, let's take gold out of the equation. And what would be your second choice for investment for 2013? Well, I think my second choice would have to be equities. The reason I say that is because, in fact, of all the quantitative easing that is going on, uh, that money is being pumped into the system. And ultimately, this is going to lead to inflation, which is going to severely damage the, the value of bonds, because bond yields are extremely low. And with inflation, the, the returns on those, on those bonds are going to collapse. So you see major players like PIMCO, who are already expressing concern in that, and even Mr. Gross uh, saying that he's investing personally in gold. But um, I think with uh, equities, the, the money that flows out of uh, bonds, because the market is so colossal, can only find one home rapidly. Either it's parked in cash, which doesn't make any sense because you know it's depreciating, or you put it into equities where you get uh, some kind of return. So I think if I were targeting equities, I would be looking at major multinational corporations with lower PEs than, than the average and a decent dividend yield. And I think these are going to do pretty well next year as well. But my favourite is still gold. Thank you very much, David, for that. A pleasure.
And as always, thank you for watching Duke Scopy TV. Now, don't forget to have a look at David's blog, www.genevabusinessinsider.blogspot.com. And of course, have a look at the Duke Scopy website for more very interesting press reviews and interviews. But for now, goodbye.